Ready? Yep. Sorry. It's a tribute to Joe Burrow. Hello and welcome back to Dumbest Damn Chief Show. I'm Pat. It's been Depp. Jordo. What's up, guys? What's going on? Chiefs are nine and two. That's right. Best team in the AFC, but the underdogs this week. No, I thought they were two and a half point favorites. Look, when you lose two games in a row to the same team, you're the okay. underdog. Okay, yeah. I get that. I get that. But technically, I'm sure we're the favorite. Two points. We're Is two it here favorite. or no. Cincinnati? In Cincinnati. In on their glorious field that is completely sarcastic is a shithole. So what's wrong with their it's field? Turf. It's turf. It's no, I, I it's think some it's, the grass is just not the best. So they got bad grass. <laughs> <laughs> they got crab grass out Knock there. Knock on Cincy? wood, we get every, everybody out of there healthy. Which they is called the grass pad. Yeah. Remember uh, that commercial? It's grass yeah. pads high I, on grass. I yeah. remember Pat. That's the best. It's word. the best commercial on TV. Uh, I still pass. Isn't it out on two ninety one? The is. grass yeah. pad. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, heartthrob Bob. That's good so marketing. Goes yeah, he's still. He, that's oh. where he gets his sod. Mm. He goes out there for something. I don't know, just to go. I don't think he even buys. Grass seed. He just anymore. likes the grass pad crew. Yeah. yeah. You ever notice good. grass seed stores have a distinct smell when you go in there? It's oh, all. Uh, never it's been in a grass <laughs> seed store. Oh, I mean, haven't? it is the same thing. Yeah, maybe everyone smells the same. Maybe that's growing up a Spinsky. You've been in a grass seed. Yeah. Store. Oh yeah, down here. What's that's definitely a Spinsky. What's smell, the one down the street that sells the mowers? Right. Right down Seed Feed. Fun yeah. fact, same thing. my family owned that like three what? generations ago. Yeah, I think yeah. I did know that. On my mom's side. Okay. Yeah, usually okay. the Raytown factoids are on my dad's side, but this is on mom's side. Sweet. That place yeah. is still open, right? Okay, I've been in there because they, they repaired lawnmowers, but yeah. I don't remember the smell. I remember smell. my dad still took Ryland's lawnmowers. family owned it growing up. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck were we talking about? <laughs> Cincinnati's grass? Cincinnati's yeah, grass. It's That's a how shit Sod report. <laughs> sod report. It's but a shithole. I don't know. I don't think it's turf, but I heard that it was not the best What shape. is it? Some hybrid or Well, something? there are. I mean, Chicago has real grass, but it's always in poor shape. So right. they just don't have the same type of maintenance that okay. like we would. So so great. I do feel like last year when we played that the field looked like shit. You guys don't remember that? I don't remember. Not really. I remember the result looking like shit. Yeah. yeah. And we'll have to get into that. But uh, we're nine and two. Let's talk about the show. It's the podcast that the whole world's talking about. It dropped today. Yeah. New Heights. New Heights. Yeah. This is, I had listened, the, the episode prior to this one was my first full episode that well, I had Who was to. it? Who was on there? There wasn't a guest. No oh, guest. Okay. They don't always have a guest. Okay. So, first, let's just talk about New Heights. Have you consumed yeah. a lot of them? Um, Vanessa actually turned it on, uh, turned me on to it. She listened to it. I hope and, she turned uh, me on every once in a while. <laughs> she, uh, she's like, you should listen to this. And it's actually good. I like Jason Kelsey. He's, he's great. great. He's really cool. Travis, not so much. I know. That laugh that he does in there kind of gets The worst is over the woo <laughs> I'm like, okay, too many of those. Uh, he'll do you work. think he does that in real life? I yeah, bet he does. Absolutely. I bet he does. I'm do you, like... Didn't he do that on the stage at the Super Bowl parade? Oh, my no. God. He drunk. He did. Than, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Whatever it was. Um, but no, I... So, Diving, was there anything... What was the most surprising... Did you guys listen to the whole thing? I did. For one. I thought the coolest nugget, which I don't know if everybody's talking about it, but I assume that this has got to be the biggest one, was that he... Tipped the Chiefs off on he draft day. Essentially drafted himself. Yes. Yeah. Well, see, here's what I I have a theory. I want to know when he said that to the Chiefs because if he was really angry that the Bears didn't draft him because it, that was revealed that he was you know when he did the counting thing because they yeah. drafted mm -hmm. Mitch Trubisky. And I think we all knew that and he played it off originally. We did, but he went into it a little bit to explain that like he just felt like the Bears had made him feel like they would draft him and he did a really good job there and yeah. then they didn't. So did he tell the Chiefs? If you don't draft me, this team's going to before the draft? Or did he do oh, that after yeah. the Bears didn't draft him? I got the impression it was I, a couple days before I think the it draft. had. I agree. I got the impression it was before. Yeah. Because he, if the Bears had the second pick, I'm guessing that he was in there before he went to the Chiefs. Yeah. So just by how this would have gone systematically, yeah, they probably told him. But... <laughs> The Either Saints, way, it means he wanted to be here. Sean Payton yeah. was hot. Instead it was going to be teams. the Saints if it wasn't us. He didn't want to go to New Orleans. I don't think so. He, you know, and he admitted in the in that podcast that he wanted to be here. So hey, it worked out. And Matt Nagy feeding him the answers to the test. That's no, that cool. was a great that nugget. Was amazing. I don't think yes. it would have mattered. No, but, I don't think so either. Um, that was kind of cool. They love Nagy. And then I thought it was interesting that they didn't mention anything about the enemy stuff. Well, the uh, way they talked about enemy was the way that we up. talk about like Demo. 
Which yeah. not that we don't love Motivator. Demo, but do we talk about Demo as like he's a great offensive football mind? Just more of a we kind of joke about the shit he says. Yeah, you know what I mean. That's yeah. the way That's... they were talking about Bienemy with Andy Reid. It was all reverent about how great he is. Yeah, mm-hmm. with Bienemy, it was just like how the random shit he says makes sense every once in a while. Yeah, I may. I think the whole spat between the two is probably overblown, and what you're seeing is the enemy just getting in his ass about something, and then they're being competitive with each other, and that's probably all it is. I don't. I I think it's the enemy is a beard of a uh, offensive coordinator. When they talked about Andy Reid dialing it up, right? Yeah, he calls he fucking plays. plays. It ain't the enemy. It's Andy. So it's like, Andy. if the enemy oversteps as the you know. Uh, flexed up running back coach, which is essentially what he is. And I can see how that. I feel like off. Pat brought up the enemy on purpose because they had gone down the list and talked about every Chiefs coach, wide receiver coach. We don't know the fucking names of. And at that point, they hadn't mentioned the enemy yet. Yeah. And it would have stuck out more if we hadn't, if he hadn't talked about him. Yeah. That, he talked more about my, their offensive line. I didn't coach. think there was drama. I didn't think there was any. I no, never thought there was. I didn't honestly. get the impression of drama. Shit just it's, happens when it's you're media. Trying to, media yeah. blows everything way out of proportion. Yeah. Um, but no, it was. Uh, it was good. He, How about them missing practice together? <laughs> getting getting a little hammered that's on a, some silver bullies? Rookie. Yeah. Rookie season? Yeah. They called him out and asked if he was with that's Kelsey's. A, no. no. Why, why would you ask <laughs> Why that? would you assume that? Yeah. Yeah, and then the bromance began. Yeah. I thought it was cool how they kind of talked more about Alex Smith and the importance yeah. of his development was it sounds like it was pretty critical in him understanding what it needed you know, how he needed to act to be a quarterback because he didn't really know how to dive into film and that all makes sense because I don't think Cliff Kingsbury is this guru like it. I mean I think he can drop a play but in terms of developing guys it doesn't sound like it's all that great well, and he really learned a ton from Alex and just followed him around yeah and that is that's awesome well you learn from Alex I and mean, he explained it in detail is just the process by which like all right Alex has been in the league for 15 years and he's pretty fucking good so what is his daily weekly process in order to be that fucking good yeah and so Pat got to watch him like oh that's how you do that instead of trying to figure it out on his own and Alex didn't obviously have the physical tools that Pat had and Pat's got the tools and he just took it from there right yeah. and it just grew from there and the next year when he started he won the MVP so yeah. he's clearly a quick learner Oh, that's one thing. The pattern recognition was one thing he talked about. Like he thinks that that's one of the things that makes him really good. Is if he sees something twice, he photographic he memory. It. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, if he sees a defense two years later, he remembers in the moment, which is pretty impressive if you actually think about it. He knows immediately what to do. Mm. Um, that's that's just better. You know, gets better with experience. I think, but that was that was cool. Where do you think that the Chiefs Wags played volleyball? Had to be volleyball beach, right? I mean, out off homes. I bet Martin you City? some. Nah, ho- Fuck hoity. no, no they're not there's not that up. many volleyball hoity, places. Hoity. There's got to be there's something be in the out in Lenexa or yeah. Prairie Village Agreed. or something. Fuck not no. really. Hoity toity neighborhood in Lock Lloyd probably I know. has a volleyball. There's, well, there's one out off like Johnson Drive, but it's way out west. It's west of 435, I, and it's not that nice. I know a ton of people that still there's play There's Centerline Green Valley. Volleyball Beach, and I've never heard any rumblings. Volleyball Beach is the coolest I'm not, one in town. I'm not disagreeing. Yeah. I'm just saying for this audience. What yeah. if it was? No. That would be badass. Well, based on where my <laughs> homes lives now, there would definitely be Volleyball Beach because it's outside. Sure. He didn't. Someone tells me he works out at the fucking uh, uh, home field out in Olathe, that he has like his own private gym inside the home field in Olathe that they give him whenever he goes and works he out. He didn't build one it. in that Olathe's mansion out. of his? Yeah, you'd think he would. Hello. Yeah. Seems mm. like an obvious. Hello, McFly. Mm. <laughs> I remember Brittany Lynn when she was first working out. It was at the city gym in Kansas City. Mm-hmm. Pat, I, should... I got to make a video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, what do you think about? Yeah. Congrats. Yeah, we haven't we got, checked we in got with bronze. her in a while. Yeah. The bronze. Patrick LeVon Bronze Mahomes the third. That is a pretty sweet nickname. What do you think about being number being called bronze? Chiefs have already drafted him. <laughs> He's think, already on the board. <laughs> do you think uh, Patrick Mahomes the second considers himself the gold Mahomes or the silver Mahomes? I don't know how the articles of organization work. I, you guys get too he much time. He would call on your hands. himself the silver. He would. To- he's come on. He would call well, him. He's what a big fan of P, like. Slick P, S- uh, Silky P is his Silky P, Silky P, and I heard Silky P likes to tip, tip him. 
I think so. Keep P gets a little, a little bit rowdy. of a drinker. Yeah. Well, I think well Patty is too. I mean, let's. Be Speaking honest. of which, so Sunday I went to the game, and I I was in a suite. Okay, and I'm just gonna put this out here. Did you this, drink with your fucking pinky in the air? It's not the usual experience that I have when I go to Arrowhead. Somebody invited me. It was actually really cool. Um, we were in a lounge. So you get a ticket, you go in there, they give you a wristband, and you're in your own lounge with all the other people that are in that section. And all the beer and wine is free. It's part of your ticket. And if you buy a mixed drink, you have to, you have to pay for that. But um, you can pop up and down. We were really close. So, so the seats were awesome. It felt like we were right on top of them. Um, I didn't feel... The coolest part was being able to go in and have it covered mm-hmm. and go to the bathroom. Oh, and go yeah. Back. The carpet <laughs> so and the that fireplace. Was, yeah, that was it's awesome. Warm. Uh, but I don't... Th- I, it's not something that I could do every year, honestly. Um, it's the only way wait, wait. I would do season tickets did is you, if I could do club level. Did you tailgate? We did tailgate. Um, it was. Did you tailgate with rich people too? A Spensky tailgate. So no, we got there late. We were like an RV. Um, no, I mean we just rolled in like an hour and a half before game. Cr- crushed a few beers, went in, and then started drinking on the free tab. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it was fun. I didn't get hammered or anything. But it was fun. There's definitely a different Chiefs experience. It's not like parking in Lot L, walking through the concrete tunnel. Definitely. <laughs> sitting yeah. up in the gold lot up here. We had gold lot parking. Where you're shaking that, at the stadium. Now that. They usher you right oh, to yeah. the fucking front of the stadium. I mean, yeah. right up there. Yeah. And you don't, you actually get out really quick, too. I don't know how they work it, but it's like you go right up. When you leave, you go the same way you came in, and you go right out gate one. Yeah. And it's amazing. Um yeah, I can tell why it's so expensive. So they did I tell you about uh so Jen's dad and uncle went to the game at the same time, but Jen's dad drove from his house in Blue Springs and okay. her uncle flew on a private jet from Des Moines. What? So her his friend, I guess, has a friend who has season tickets mm-hmm. and fries flies private from okay. Des Moines to the Arrowhead every like fucking a home puddle game. Puddle jumper or like a they go downtown. No, they fly into downtown. Like I'm talking, like okay. a nice. I don't ass, think. Like, yeah. Okay. So it's like a G, like a G, a jet jet. It's, yeah, it's uh, like yeah. what Mahomes would fly. <laughs> they're, not a, they're not flying a prop plane. No, a <laughs> private jet in a downtown airport. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So they leave Arrowhead the same time, and Uncle makes it to his house in Des Moines before Dad makes it no to his house in Des Moines. Actually, really? I the don't flight was like 20 that. minutes. I believe that. Yeah. And the downtown airport's, you know, pretty quick to get to. If you're in normal parking trying to get out of Arrowhead, you may as well just sit back. What crack, a yeah, life. no, you're not what getting out. What a life. Yeah. Uh, I think we're going to try to go to that uh, Christmas Eve game. So I think dope. the tickets are going to kind of be more available than most people think. Um, That's a noon game. It is a nooner. So, yeah, but um, it was fun. What do you guys think about the Chiefs getting flexed out of Sunday night? Because Russell Wilson is so awful. Did you guys see Russell Wilson get yelled at by one of his D yes, linemen? Yes, it was yeah. amazing. You that don't see great. that hardly did they, ever. Did we get to the bottom? What was? You know, he's a former former Chief. Who Mike, was that? Mike Purcell. He was know. here. He was with us for a hot minute. Okay. Um, I'm gonna. I think some of that is overblown. But I think there's a lot of truth to that locker room already being divided about how he acts. You know, he has his own fucking office in the stadium. What? Doing what? He's clearly so not the coach has a film. Coach, assistant coach, quality control. All those guys have their own offices. Yeah. So does the quarterback. I've never heard, like, That's he's the only person I've ever heard his quarterback have their own office. He asked for it. That dude clearly has put himself on an island. Uh, yeah, there's no doubt his teammates do not like him for all this shit. Well, how that's part of the reason. Normal, like, how many years did he sign with them? Oh, they're married to him for four, at least. Like, financially, they can't walk away. They'd have to pay him over a hundred million. What happened? What do you figure happened? What? Why? Because he won a Super Bowl and was good, like objectively good. Um, I think uh, who's the coach in Seattle? I should know this. Oh, Pete Carroll. Carroll. I think Pete Carroll was smarter than everybody and just realized that it wasn't working with him, and it was he was like Russell was riding off of. Their coaching staff, their development, mm-hmm. their system, and it wasn't working. It was going downhill, so he cut bait, and now they're laughing at everybody because he's doing better with Geno Smith. Yep. Yeah. And I just don't think he was as good as everybody thinks he was. Yeah, that makes sense. And now he's with a rookie coach who doesn't know what the fuck he's doing. A GM doesn't know what the fuck he's doing. It is a dumpster fire in Denver. And I don't, 
I really don't care because they beat the shit out of us so much for so many years. It's like, fuck you. I don't give a shit. Yeah, Go figure it out. Awful. Can yeah. we revisit that MFK game we played? Because I don't want to be married to Russell Wilson. <laughs> you don't. You want to take that? Take I'll take backers. Kirk Cousins. Let's do it this week. Who would you rather? All right. Who would you rather? Uh, Jason or Travis Kelsey? Yeah, I have to have a third, right? No, it's who would you rather? How would I, who would I rather what? Have sex with. <laughs> Clearly, Travis, Jason would murder me. Oh, what? so you're the bottom? Is what you're saying? <laughs> I mean, I'm clearly going to be the female in that. I c- okay, you pick then. Oh, I'm going Jason all day. Jason. Yeah, you top? Yeah. <laughs> well, first off, Travis, what was it, the food thing that they were talking about? I we're talking Oh, this. chili? The, yeah, he says the, if it's good. Yeah. The, whatever that if shit it, is. If it looks like it the way it goes in comes out the same way then he's I'm thinking not Travis is a chicken finger and french fry guy like that's what he orders like wherever they go never expanded after yeah he's at the top of a fucking mountain at Lake Geneva <laughs> dining with billionaires and he orders the chicken tender basket <laughs> I think Jason could probably throw down in the kitchen and the pillow talk would be way better he did mention that um, I liked how they opened up about how they clearly go out and party and he said when he's absolutely bombed he likes something from yeah, water water burger burger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. in the middle of the night dude you could tell that Jason or Travis doesn't actually eat Whataburger he was trying to remember what the fucking menu item was that he was he didn't I've mini butter, bi- mini butter biscuit it. I had it I, I was literally driving down 7 highway when I was listening to the podcast I was uh-huh. like you know what fuck it I'm going to Whataburger okay. I'm going to re- Rev- reward this isn't Rev- there a marketing. menu huge it's, it's like a Texas Sonic there did you do the burger yeah okay but I get it without like a bun so it's not the same experience. their menu is enormous right I heard their they jalapeno so ranch off. is one of the best condiments so like all right let's do this real quick Fa- like top three condiments fast food because Pat loves the ketchup at Whataburger. Okay. Whatever sauce is that Chick-fil-A? Chick-fil-A sauce. Okay. That's I wouldn't have top. Just king. Vanessa turned me on to that. Um, she keeps turning them on. This is a good. I think. Going well. So he talked about ketchup. There's something about McDonald's ketchup to me that's really good. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. You got to try the Whataburger ketchup and see if. I haven't had ketchup. it yet. <laughs> if my dad wants fancy sauce, he can have fancy sauce. We need to make his own fucking batch. Um, that? That's from Step Brothers. Remember? Oh <laughs> And I don't know, like... I would go, all right, it's Chick-fil-A sauce I'm number g- one. I'm going to give you a wild card. What is that? Long John Silver's tartar sauce. Oh, oh nothing <laughs> from Long John Silver should be considered here. Oh, yeah, we're sliding in. Yeah. That's disgusting. <laughs> oh, Underrated. That's nostalgia. Underrated. Right there. Is there Jalapeno uh, uh, ranch from Whataburger. And then I, it's a tough tie between horsey sauce from Arby's. Ooh. Oh, okay. But I'm going to go uh, awesome. Sawsome sauce? Awesome sauce. Sawsome sauce. Pick. The one that they do at Wendy's from time to time. I don't know what that is. It's like their nugget. I think it's sawsome sauce. But it's like a McRib. If it's open, periodical. To the ranch dressing at Longhorn Steakhouse. Yeah. Okay, it, that's her fast food. Is it's long. good. They make it's it delicious ranch. It's not normal ranch. Give me that slim thick. Uh, what well, I don't remember what we were talking about, but let's talk about the podcast again because there's two things that stuck out to me about Mahomes. Okay. Okay. One is. He, it's obvious that he is just this talented unicorn who like grew up in the right environment to be an incredible sponge for sports, right? Like, agree. If his dad wasn't an MLB player, he probably wouldn't be as good as he is now. But if he didn't have all of these, you know, genetics, I guess that all goes in tandem. So, like, he's a physical freak. He is more mm-hmm. physically a freak than every quarterback in the NFL right now. Yes. I kind of thought maybe like he was light years ahead of everyone from like a reading shit like understanding the game standpoint but I don't think he was I think it's apparent that like he was just Harry Potter and he doesn't know how to use his fucking wand yet yeah and now he's figuring it the fuck out because he mentioned like learning how to check down to running backs like that's Mm -hmm. like a last year this year sort of thing don't you think about it like you look back on it now and he was doing amazing and you were in that mindset that he was just this freak right yeah and that's what he did when he didn't know what he was doing. That's what I mean. So that's the promising thing. <laughs> like, it's like, if he's so literally saying, just saying figuring trend, out his powers yeah, now. Right? Like, the trend is going, like, the trend is going yeah. up is what you're saying. Yeah, like he's playing amazing football. Yeah. Um, like, he threw 55 touchdowns. I keep picking him to grow, throw 60. I, I just think that he's going to beat a football what Mark McGuire was to fucking baseball when we were mm-hmm. kids, you know? And he's going to have a record like that, and it's got to be touchdowns, because he threw for 55 his rookie fucking year. Like, it's insane. There's no way that's going to be his best year, in my opinion. 
But then the other thing that smacks me in the face is like they talked about the comparisons, and his were Steph Curry and Michael Jordan, mm-hmm. and he more identified with Steph Curry, yeah, than he did with a Michael Jordan. Way of playing the game. And back in the day when we were talking on this podcast with you and McMurray, we made a big deal about the Last Dance because I thought and I still believe that like those guys were watching that and putting themselves like Kelsey was wearing Rodman's jersey and fucking you know Jordan was wearing. Mahomes were in Jordan's jersey but to hear him and I don't know if it's I think he was just being I you think he was just being yes yeah. okay I don't think he would ever say fuck yeah I'm Michael yeah, Jordan he's very cognizant no way he won't say he's better no gonna be better than Brady he no. isn't actively yeah. living eating and breathing every day the narrative that I have to get one more than Brady then he's not exactly who I wanted but, him to put be put it this way Pat he's very self aware about where he is still. But he also yeah. said that he retains all of the shit that he hears in the media about what his flaws are and he... Hashtag Petty Mahomes. You know, yes, Petty exactly. Mahomes, like, which I love it about him. But he was saying he's not away, as petty as Jordan. If you think he's not filing that away, you're crazy. Why well, This weekend is a good weekend for it We're because gonna, we, we owe the in. fucking Bengals. Yep. So if they don't fucking... If Mahomes doesn't come out here just like zipping green streams of magic out of his fucking wand then maybe he's not storing this shit because there can't be anybody in the league who he owes more than the fucking bank so let's talk about the game okay leading up to this he's never beaten fucking burrows cincinnati is hot okay they are playing really well Mm -hmm. they're getting some guys back um take 30 seconds from last year to this year each of you and what do you think they have to do to get over the cincinnati hump I'll go first. Okay. I, they need to run the ball okay. uh, effectively. Um, so <laughs> that four up, eight back shit, we need to just take that off the table. And um, Which Mahomes has been doing a good job of doing that all year by hitting the check downs, by not always going for bombs, by running the ball himself, um, which he's done more this year. I think he's looked to do it more this year, which is wild when you have to teach a quarterback to run instead of have to teach them from running, which is usually mm-hmm. what you have to do with talented running quarterbacks. Um so yeah, I just think they have to run the ball effectively and then uh, uh, get after Joe Burrows. That's what I want to see. I don't know that we have to do the latter. I think if we run the ball effectively, the game's over. Yeah, because they played us eight deep is how they really beat would, us last year. I would say the secondary. It's the same way the Bucks beat us in the Super Bowl. The, the coverage, you know, when we're on defense and not just letting him chuck the ball up and us getting a stupid penalty, a 15-yard fucking penalty and beating ourselves. Yeah. Or what, that's, I think, going to be a, so a I, big deal. We clearly outplayed them last year in both first halves, and we could go through all these variables in our mind. You know, our secondary is a lot different. Our linebackers are more athletic this year. Our defensive line is putting a lot of pressure. Mahomes is playing great. Wide receivers are different. No Tyreek. We're still scoring at an unprecedented pace. But to me, what it comes down to is 95 in the middle of the defense. Yeah. Like if this is the game that. This is the team that Chris Jones needs to show up and take that Aaron Donald step of completely affecting a game. Because if you look at last year, that first game we played him, he had two sacks in the first half. Second half, he was non-existent. In the playoff game, he only had three tackles. And he's had a great year. He's affected so many games this year. And if there's one team that he needs to do it against that we need to physically see, it needs to be this one. In my be great opinion, to see him get in the head like of Joe Burrow. Of yeah. Burrow. To and like live there would be cool. Affect the game, right? Like whatever they throw at him to block him. And I watched him against the Rams. He is unblockable at times. And that needs to happen this week. You need to put pressure up the middle and I just hope that Mahomes will do his thing, but I really want it to be the Chris Jones game. Like I watched a little bit <clears throat> of Defending the Kingdom, the Mitch Holtis show, mm-hmm. and him and his co-host, who are obviously in the building, are acting like the Chiefs, like, Arrowhead's pulsing with, like, revenge blood right now is what he's acting they like. They should be. That that's what that practice facility mm-hmm. is. And so if there's, if there's any truth to that, if that's real, then I expect a Chiefs fucking victory, and I expect, like, to see kind of what we're hoping for. You know, like, Mahomes to fucking come out throwing... F- firing balls of flame magic and to see uh, Chris Jones, you know, looking like ludicrous with the giant hands in the music video going in the, the offensive line. And that AFC championship game in the second half, we only ran the ball like four times, I think. Four? Mm-hmm. And what they were doing was dropping eight and they were basically oh. forcing Mahomes mm-hmm. to 
chop up the defense and he wasn't doing it yeah. and i i'm with you like they got to run the ball but we're a little banged up the, we're running back right now the only thing you can do to beat the chiefs is or to like the, the best thing this, the only strategy that works against mahomes is to try to take away the deep ball and force him to beat you four or six they don't really play that way time. anymore though and if you the only way to do that is to put three or four up front <laughs> and to try to stop the run with your three or four and generate pressure and if you can't do both of those things yeah then it's really hard to beat mahomes i don't feel like they play that way anymore though like i know it sounds crazy but they don't really well, he's been it, gashing people all, yeah, they don't I mean, chuck the ball downfield since really last anymore. year we started with the last season Three and four is how we started last season. Since then, we went. Uh, the only teams that beaten us uh, the rest of the season was Cincinnati Bengals. Since he twice, and this game has a lot of. Uh, so he kind of fixed it then, but he's taking it up a notch this year with running. I personally think this game has a ton of seeding implications because right. if you look at Buffalo's schedule Buffalo compared to ours tonight. after this game, Buffalo still has to go to New England again. They play Cincinnati again. This I is our believe. hardest game until the AFC Championship, and then we have Denver twice, we have Vegas once, and then we have the Seahawks game, which any we anything could happen too. in the Texans. We could drop one of those games. Like, it's the NFL, but um, this game for us, like, we got to get it. I think yeah. we have to get it to have the head-to-head against them. Oh, okay. That's yeah. fair. I mean, I think it fucking happen. Yeah, it's... I would much rather be playing here instead of Cincinnati, um, but that didn't help us much last that year. That doesn't bother me as much. Yeah. I, what I did think- you guys think of... Uh, Rojo's first. Yeah, did you got you got a little uh I thought he looked good, man. I thought he had some juice. He catches the ball really well out of the backfield. He had that one throw to the flat and it was wide open. I mean he didn't have anybody in front of him for fifteen yards and um I mean he has an opportunity right now. You know, Jarek McKinnon might not play Sunday. What's wrong with him? Hamstring. Jesus Christ. They signed Melvin Gordon. Yeah, what? yeah. What a wild. That's a pick. need sign. Like they, yeah, they're, yeah. they're 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 thin he at running a back. Fumbling problem. He does. Uh, so they're gonna go. It might be Melvin Gordon, Pacheco, and Rojo at running Speaking back. Speaking of week. fumbling problems, did your fucking heart drop to your ass when Sky, Sky Moore. Moore? We are. Sky are we done, done with, with this fucking Jesus experiment? Christ. Are we done? Yeah, we got to be. I, I feel bad for the, him and Moy because they keep putting him out there and he's not ready for it. And you know who's having a hell of a year is Dave Tobe. I mean, it's been a fucking... <laughs> between Dave, you Sky know, Moore and the- Butker <laughs> and the fucking first replacement kicker we had. You know how to get in, in a job, you go in your annual review? Well, Dave, um, <laughs> how do you think you did this year? <laughs> <laughs> your kicker, your all-world kicker, has basically lost his any knowledge of kicking, and you keep putting a punt returner out there who's never returned punts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's been bad. Be Sky pu- Moore hasn't returned punts. There's a reason. Like, it's not because well, he wasn't the most athletic dude no. on the field. He never did in college. That's then why? There was a fucking reason. Yeah, right. they, forced, they were trying to force feed that. Yeah. Um, no, uh, they already came out and said this week that Justin Watson's going to be the guy. And if he just catches it, I'm fine with that. Okay, that was another great nugget. Is apparently this is the dorkiest dude on the planet. They were making fun of oh, how the he way throws. He right? <laughs> no, and the way he runs. And the way he runs. He's yeah. a perfect yeah. runner. Down. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. That was a great podcast. It really is a great show. Obviously, they're like uh, inspired by Pat McAfee. Like Pat McAfee's giant mm-hmm. fucking Spotify deal was like, oh mother fuck. <laughs> I wish they could get Andy on there. Oh, wouldn't would that be, be so badass? I think Andy would be on a podcast. I think he's. I don't think he would ever let out because like, really no. let his hair down. This and- for me was the best interview I've seen of Pat Mahomes, and I think it's because he's in that scenario. Like you're with your buddies. It's not like when they're interviewing him for you know before a Sunday night game or something. He actually like seemed relaxed. Yeah. Got more out of him, you know, than Yeah, he was talking to his best pal and yeah. his brother. Yeah. I wonder yeah. if Andy would I I think there's way more personality in Andy Reid than we see and I just oh, hopefully uh, yeah. someday we can see it. Did I did I did I talk about the uh how I was flicking through like YouTube and I saw like an old version of uh the franchise from like last year and it was uh his wife, Mrs. Reed, baking Christmas cookies. No. Oh, it was the cutest thing I've ever seen. So it's like just cameras inside the Reed family home, mm-hmm. and she's baking these sugar cookies with all these red and gr- green sprinkles. She's like, oh, Andrew's just going to love these. <laughs> oh, <laughs> only calls him Andrew. <laughs> never said that's Andy. Cool. Never said cute. Coach Reed. Only called him Andrew and like showed his favorite decorations on the Christmas tree. Apparently, Andrew comes home every day during that time of year and just says, and walks around with like his eyes wide open and like loves the Christmas I decorations. Mean, what's not to 
love about Andy, about Coach. Old yeah. Andrew. I guess he's got a pretty sweet uh, <laughs> prime rib recipe for the holidays. In the way that you he think makes he throws it? down in the kitchen, or do you no? Think? He does. He okay. talked about him making prime rib for Christmas dinner. Oh, nice! And it's a way that he turns the oven off and still leaves it in there so that it cools. Yeah. in a certain way. Um, I there's love way, to it, eat Andy's prime. There's rib. clearly how do I get invited to <laughs> that? There's clearly way more personality to Andy Reid than we see. I we just get little so. slivers of it at times. But I think that did you get the sense that they're scared shitless of him? Oh yeah. At times, oh. yeah. Like he's clearly a hard ass yeah. in many ways. I think that he can get in their ass about things yeah. if they're not on their game. It's almost like they don't want to disappoint him. Yeah, is what it is. Even father, when they were late figure. that day, it's like don't. God, Dad's don't gonna be so pissed. Yeah. yeah, I'm just thinking of other random things for that podcast. It was not like Mahomes was really still upset at Kelsey for kind of sandbagging it against the Montana kid in beer pong. Yeah, he's holding on to that. Yeah. I well, he does the bounce, and I gotta say, I do the same thing yeah. when I play beer pong, but I'm successful, so. Look, against this one, usually. Could, could you, like, if I was Mahomes and I was playing against Joe Montana and Beer Pong, that's Monta- a cool Joe Montana. Yeah, he <laughs> couldn't help himself. Couldn't help himself. How, who won the point picker? Me. Oh, what fuck. was... Uh, so, 26-10 to 10 was the final. I had 35-14. Mm. Jordan, you were next closest with 38-17, which brings the season total to Jordan 3, Sarah 4, Pat 1. There's a bit of a stinker in the red zone. I'm going to have to go on a hell of a tear here down the stretch <laughs> you might, just to you get might, back in you it. You might. You, gotta, you can go on a run. You, there's still time. I'm going to... I'll go for... You guys want to predict for this week? I'm going to go 24-21 Chiefs. Mm, the classic 24-21. Um, I'm going to go 34-24 28 Chiefs. <coughs> Patricia? 38 34 Chiefs. All right. I want to see a high scoring game. I'm trying to will it into existence. Yeah, because that Rams game was kind of yawn. That was not the Chiefs' best showing. Um, conspiracy theory. Oh, boy. Let's have it. They, I think that they were very vanilla in the round. On zone. purpose. I just. You think they, they sucked that bad in the red zone? The best red zone offense in the league sucked that bad. I I don't know if they were showing much against the Rams and anticipating and this still game. won by two scores. What are you doing, Pap? I was trying to find something that I was going to play. It was from the Church of Laszlo um, this week, but it was a headline. Apparently, this kid was riding in the car with his dad. His dad was driving, and his dad was so drunk he had to call the cops on his own dad. Mm-hmm. And <clears throat> the dad, so he's like, you hear the audio call. He's like, yeah, um, my dad's driving me to Las Vegas, and um, he's really drunk, and I don't think he should be driving. Well, what, uh, what, uh, what are you driving? What's your dad wearing? Uh, we're driving yada yada car. My dad's wearing a Raiders hat. So this dad got hammered drunk on like the Raiders game threw his kid in the back of the car and said we're driving to Las Vegas Dang. to go to the Raiders game and like what the kid had to call that's insane yeah from I'm guessing it was from Oakland I don't know where exactly it was I'm just like Oakland Raiders fans are the Florida man of the NFL yeah like all of the weirdest NFL headlines I feel like are Raider fans. It's the girls with daddy issues. It's wild. Yeah, it really is. It is. That's exactly it. <laughs> Everyone on OnlyFan has, has like the same therapist, you know? If you if there's a fight in the stands in football or the MLB, it's usually Padres fans. It's Southern California. Is it? <laughs> yeah. There's so, so much fans? rage. Yeah, there's so much rage. Padres fans are known as oh, being badasses? Yeah. Padres and LA Dodgers games in terms of MLB fights in the stands is the top. I, I mean, would expect... The opening scene of Gladiator is what it looks like. I would like. expect it's the Northeast, like a Boston team. They don't, you don't really... You know? No. I think they're more this. Oh, just talk. Yeah. I think those Niners-Raiders games used to get pretty salty back in the Bay Area. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, Ronald Jones, uh, he's pretty good. Like, I think that... So, my... I just assumed that he was like a... That was... I, I, 
because last week we were talking about it, and you were excited to see him because you thought he was pretty good. I just assumed he was like a what I assume Melvin Gordon is. Like he was a Josh Gordon type pickup that no. was just being stashed. I think he's got more there than they're going to have to use. I him think now. you're right. They've used him now, and I think that we just now you see why he's we... just good. <clears throat> yeah, mm-hmm. I wanted to because because I don't know that I would give him carries that other people have had yet this season because I still like Clyde. I know that he's not what everybody wants him to be, and he's not as good as Pacheco. But I'd still give Clyde carries. I'm not. I'm not convinced that Ronald should have had any of Clyde's carries already this year or Jets. Yeah, and I wanted to bring this up a little bit because you mentioned this last week or the show before about the depth because I feel like in years past when guys would get hurt, you really notice that we were missing somebody and we don't have McColl right now. We don't have Tony right now. And it's just kind of like plug and play. Do we know any kind yeah. of timeline What's on those the dudes? Deal with Tony? Tony has had the same hamstring problem for the last three weeks and, and that was the one that was in New York and he hasn't practiced. Hardman's he's, on IR. Hardman's on IR. So he's four at least. That's this four is minimum. Three. Um, yeah. This would be three. He'd be out next week. Um, it's cool. We got Justin Watson. So Watson, he, Juju. He wouldn't be able to come back until week 16 against Houston. No, oh, I'm sorry. Week 15 against Houston. Yeah. Watson, Juju, MVS. And then they're throwing a ton to the tight ends right now. Which is great because we're pretty yeah. fucking good there, honestly. Yeah. Noah Gray's okay. He's not like going to do anything awesome. But I think 88 could be special. Jody. Fortson. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, he could be really Jody. special. He's thrown a ton to Justin Watson, too. Yeah. He has to, but he has to. So, um, Juju, I think last week was sprinkled in. I hope this game, he's going to have to have more of an impact this game for us to win. It was, the last game was kind of a boring stop and start frustration mm-hmm. game, I think, for Chiefs fans. But they, uh, I heard this compare, I think it was on Petro this week, they compared it to a 2015 Royals win late in the year when we were just cruising and everybody knew we were going to go to the playoffs. It's just like, Yawn, you know it was a this Bengals, standard four to one win for the Royals late in the year that year, and I guess we everything after this is pretty much AFC West. So like those are exciting games, but, but we're just going to be beside ourselves I, if we lose any of I, those. Pat, though, but if you really look at the Bills' schedule, they just lost Von Miller for four weeks. He's on IR. What is the rest of their this, schedule? Who do they, they have? Well, we've got a cupcake schedule. We do. That's what I'm saying. But we could we, lose we, one of those we, games. It I could mean, be boring as fuck the rest of the way. I, uh, they have to play Cincinnati, and they play New England once again. So they play them tonight. I think that's uh, – is it in New nope. England? I thought it was in New England. Okay, so the – here's the – are you fucking kidding me? Okay. The Bills play the, the Pats tonight. Then they've got the Jets. Then, then the Dolphins. On, then the Dolphins. Then the Bears, the Bengals. And then the Patriots again. They have a tough schedule. They have a tougher schedule than we That's do. That's what I'm saying. Like everybody does. We have a cake schedule. Yeah, we, we get do. to play Russell well, twice. We get to play. Yeah, but we went nine and two through the hardest. And what I'm saying is the yeah, ba- so the Bengals the like, Bengals are seven and four, and they've got they got a, they're playing the Browns next week, then the Bucks, then the Pats, the Bills, and the Ravens. So they don't. I mean, they actually have a tough schedule too down the stretch. The Chiefs, if they win this game and they don't fuck up. That's they, what I'm saying. They got the one seat. So there's an infographic that was passed around Chiefs Twitter uh, this week, and it is complaints about NFL officiating based on percentage of total <laughs> fan tweets complaining. <laughs> the number one ranked fandom, the Kansas City Chiefs, the whiniest group about com- referees on Twitter. Channeling my inner Vince Vaughn from Wedding Crashers. Erroneous! <laughs> Erroneous on all accounts! I, I How do we know that those are all true Kansas City Chiefs fans in Kansas City? You think these are all bots? I thought you are supposed to clean that shit up, Come Elon! Come on, Elon! Well, he said that was happening today, so if that was measured uh, last week, you're right. then... So this is just bad data. Yeah, redo. That's it. Listen, we do bitch a lot, but I think it's always warranted. Because the entire world is against the Chiefs because they want us to fail. Chiefs, Bears, Cowboys, Dolphins, Titans. That is your top five bitchiest teams. I think it comes with winning. Yeah, because yeah, there's an expectation. And we're so locked in. Yeah. We're Who's expect the la- to win because we have the best players ever. And if we don't win, there's got to be a reason. The last team on that list is the Colts. Yeah. They're just so nice. Oh, uh, bullshit. No biggie. Yeah. <laughs> So you don't feel bad about being a whiny bitch? No, I I don't feel bad. You, he literally said a couple of weeks ago that he thought the NFL was fixing the game against the Chiefs. No. I yeah. said that in 10 years there's going to be yeah, some sort of I report come out about in you know underground gambling with 
referees. Right. Okay, I wouldn't be surprised about that either. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if it happens against the Chiefs, then that's just product of the environment. But I never said it was just the Chiefs. I I don't give a shit about this little graphic. Okay, I don't give a (laughs) shit. Because all I think about is that fucking call on Chris Jones. Uh, yeah. And we're, we're you know right what? To bitch. I will complain about it, you sandbagging sons yeah. of bitches. What about the sap strip? But interception. Or, or strip sack uh, unnecessary roughness on Chris Jones this year. We're not, I think it might have all come from that play. Yeah, that may have just been uh, <laughs> yeah. maybe one blip on the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. Which is all warranted. So that's fine. I'll take that L if you want to call it. I've never it that felt one. anger towards Cincinnati before. Uh, I think that their fans are pretty, they're, they haven't done anything and they like to talk a lot of shit like they have. I want to go up to Joe Burrow and take that cigar and pull it out of his mouth and turn around and put the lid in. <laughs> you know what's funny is when he's, he's like on that, you know, the, with the whole cigar thing, he smoked that cigar after he beat us and they went and played the Super Bowl and lost. Uh-huh. And it was kind of like he cut the celebration a little too early Yeah, uh-huh. and they think he jinxed himself. I was down in New Orleans right before that and there was fucking Bengals fans everywhere. Like go Joe Super Bowl billboard. G E A U X. Yeah, exactly. Oh, <laughs> fuck. They got good spellers down there. Yeah. In Zana. <laughs> but you can say the same thing about the Bills, too. They haven't oh, yeah. done in anything against yeah. us. Yeah. No, but we, like, I remember growing up playing the Bills in the 90s. Right. Yeah. But did you. Even- Bills fans just got to get used to, like, the 90s are back, and instead of going to the uh, Super Bowl four times in a row and losing, you're going to go to the AC Championship a uh, hundred times and lose, and <laughs> Patrick Mahomes is your new Troy Aikman, and fucking Travis Kelsey is your new Mike Lurvin. We're back in the Sorry, 90s. Buffalo! <laughs> it's going to suck that bad. That's what's happening. That's just a kick in the balls once every year. Yep. All right. Super Bowl, Super Bowl. Chiefs. Chiefs.